Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I am so happy today. I know, it's a rare occasion. Um, good to see you online. Great to be in the house and to have about 20 people here as well. Um, good to see some of your faces that I haven't seen for a while. Uh, it's going to be a good morning. I want you to, at home, if you're with people, come on, touch someone and say, it's going to be a good morning. If you're in here, look at someone and say, it's going to be a good morning. So cool to have people in the room uh, for church online. And so a welcome to you and obviously our friends from Chilton are joining in as well, which is really cool. Who's ready for the word? Why don't we thank the team? Great job, everybody. Um, I'm going to get the team back in a few moments to sing something. Uh, but right now, I feel that God wants me to release a word. This is the last week of the revival series. The last week, but I believe it's the start of a move of God and the start of something amazing that God wants to do. So can you say amen to that? When I was a teenager, which wasn't that long ago, mind you, <laughs> just to sort out the confusion, uh, wasn't that long ago, but I remember after school sometimes going to the shopping centre and walking um, through looking at different shops and there was one shop front that I was really uh, curious about and it was the travel agent. And I remember looking and seeing, you know, uh, return flight to Fiji, return flight to Singapore um, and all these different things. And I remember looking at that and sort of imagining a world that I'd never seen. For those who don't know, I grew up in Mount Druitt and I never thought I'd ever leave Mount Druitt, by the way. It was my own little world. And so looking at this shop front was always just sort of a reminder that there's a world out there. And I used to sometimes pick up some of the flyers outside and take them, you know, the little brochures with pictures and and there was a few places I'd always wanted to go. Um, and one of them was Vanuatu. One of them was America. And another one was Singapore. And I, I'd heard that Singapore was the cleanest country in the world at the time. And that chewing chewing gum was illegal there. So I always just wanted to go and, and look and, and see if it was clean. And so I remember doing that and um, grabbing those things. But in 2011, I actually had the opportunity of going to Singapore. And it was amazing. It changed my life. And I remember, obviously, uh, thanking God because I had seen it in the flyers. I had seen it on the wall, on the shop front. But I hadn't experienced it. And there are many Christians today who have seen it on the wall. They've seen it on the shop front. They've heard about it. They've looked at it and seen it in the Bible, but they haven't experienced it. And I wanted to live the sort of life uh, where what I saw in the Word was an experience that I could live in Jesus' name. Not just words on a paper, but an experience. And so today, I want to talk about something that's in the Bible, obviously, thank God. But it's something that God wants to take us a little bit deeper in. He doesn't just want us to read about it. He doesn't just want us to sing about it. He doesn't just want us to hear about it. He wants us to experience it in Jesus' name. And so there's something I'm going to share about that. And I believe if we would, as a church, experience this thing, it would change our church. Not only will it change our church, it would change our community. And hopefully it would change our world. In Jesus' name, because our world needs this thing. Is that all right? So I know you're all wondering what it is. So let's pray um, before we embark on this journey today. Father God, we thank you for your word. May this message change our lives today. Not only do we want it to change our lives, we want it to change our church. We don't just want it to change our church, but our community and our world. Our world desperately needs this. So Holy Spirit, thank you for your anointing. It's not... Uh, my gift, it's not my latest haircut, it's not my latest outfit that will get the job done, but it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You know, um, as a kid, I loved going to my auntie's house on the weekend. Um, I had lots of, I've got lots of cousins, like lots. And um, I remember the weekend was like, let's stay at the cousin's house. Let's go to the auntie's house. Has anybody ever done that? I just, that was the big thing. Our whole family would do that and we'd move from house to house, all the cousins. So when auntie would have everyone, have all the 20 kids, the next auntie had to have, you know, 20 kids next week. And so there was a, that was a bit of a tension between the aunties. 
um, because some auntie said, oh, not this week. And then it's like, well, we had your kids last week. Anyways, I remember one of my aunties. I used to say, auntie, can I please stay this weekend? And she would say, oh, I don't know. She'd say, who's your favourite auntie, though? <laughs> and I'd go, oh, you, of course it's you. And I'd have to say it to every auntie, but of course it's you. And she goes, yeah, but how much do you love me? And I'd go, like this much. And she'd go, oh, only that much? Come on, you can do better than that. And I'd say, all right, I love you to the shop and back. And she'd go, oh, is that all? She's like, but I love you to the Sydney Harbour Bridge and back. And then I'd have to top it. And I'd go, but I love you to Fiji and back, Arnie. And she'd go, well, I love you to the moon and back. And we'd just go back and forth, back and forth, until she finally beat me. And she would say, oh, I love you to, you know... Um, the universe and back, and it was that massive that I couldn't think of anything else to beat it. And so I'd say, oh, you beat me, you win, you win. And so who's ever played that game? Another game I used to play, I remember in primary school, I'd pick the flowers. And I would play, she loves me, she loves me not, because I had a crush on a girl named Hope. And um, I used to play, you know, she loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. And then it gets to she loves me not. And then I'd lose sometimes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, there goes my chance. All on the flower. You know, it was all built on what the flower could tell me. And so I remember playing that game. And so, you know, um, we also, as a society, we try to measure love. We want to measure love. We make games about it. We write songs about it. Who's ever heard, you know, I remember growing up listening to the, the love songs on the radio. Normally it's on a Friday night or something like that, the love song FM, whatever it was. And we're singing love is in the air everywhere I look around. Hey, love is in the air. And we'd sing that. And then we'd sing, you know, meatloaf, I'm all out of love. And then we'd go to Tina Turner and sing what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do, got to do with it? And we sing all these love songs. And so the world has written songs about love. We've made games about love. We try to measure love. And you know one of the most, the most Googled questions on Google is what is true love? So the world must be wondering, right? What is true love? And we've tried to measure it. We've tried to articulate it. We've tried to Google it. But do we actually have a handle on this thing called love? Do we actually know what it is? Do we actually know, and not only do we know, we may read it in the, in the flyer, we may see it on the wall, but do we actually experience it in Jesus' name? That's what I want to talk about this morning. Because if we could get a handle on this, it would change our church. It would change our community. It would change our world. Can you say amen? And so if we look, you know, in the Bible, it says in the last days, People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of all sorts of things. So there is a hint in the Bible that in the last days, love will be distorted and people will be confused about love. But I pray that this message today, we're speaking on the love of revival. That's the, that's the title. But for those who know me, I love subtitles. And so the love of revival subtitle, I love you, I love you more. That's the subtitle. I love you, I love you more. And so we've tried to do this thing, but in Ephesians chapter 3, can we get that up? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, the Apostle Paul writes uh, to the Ephesian church, to the church in Ephesus, and here's what he says. Here's what he says, and mind you, just a bit of a fun fact, Ephesus is no longer there today, nor is the church. But let's keep reading. Ephesians 3, verse 16, so I, I hope Generations Church is here in 50 years. But let's look at the challenge. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, come on, someone look at someone and say, you, being rooted and established in love, someone say love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, 
and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. There's a paradox that we may actually know a love that you can't know. That's so big for you to know. But he's praying that we'll get it. He's praying that we'll know it, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Oh my goodness me, hallelujah. And so, I love that, but let's look at it in the message version. Can I give you the message version? All right, I don't live on the message version, but I'll read the other version first and then look at the message, but here it is. Here's what he says now. My response is to get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you'll be able to take in with all the followers of Jesus. Here's this, the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth. Test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. I don't know about you, but I want to reach out and experience the breadth of the love of God. I want to test its lengths in Jesus' name. I don't just want to read about it. I want to plumb the depths, hallelujah, and rise to the heights of this love of God. That's what he's praying for us to do. He's praying to the church, about the church in Ephesus that you would do this. Why? Well, if we look at Revelation chapter 2, here is what the prophet writes to the church in Ephesus. Look at this. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I'm going to go on this side. Here's what God says to the church in Ephesus. Uh, oh, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Woo. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Now, I don't know if that's the reason why the church in Ephesus doesn't exist or that the whole city doesn't exist. It's obviously in Turkey now, but there was a warning there to the church in Ephesus. Hey, if you don't return to your love, your first love, I'll remove the lampstand. It's a bit heavy, isn't it? But Generations Church has a lampstand. Come on, Generations Church has a lampstand. And... um. He's challenging us today, hey, let's return. Let's come back to this place of love. Let's sort this out. Let's find out what this is about in Jesus' name. Is that all right? So can we put this together? Um, contrary to Tina Turner and Meatloaf and everybody else who has a view on love, let's look at what the Bible says. Let's, I want to give you three things. What, do you, what does love look like? What is this thing? Then I want to tell you how do we experience it. Is that all right? Okay, thank, is that all right online? I hope so. Amen. I can hear all the amens online coming through. They're all clogging up the internet. Amen. Okay, number one, love. True love. What's true love? Okay, let's turn Google off and let's look at what God says. Number one, it's defined by the Father. It's defined by the Father. If we look in 1 John chapter 4, here it is. Uh, 4 verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. That's a good starting point, isn't it? Love comes from God. Love does not come from what the world says is love. But if you want to know what love is, you start with God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Love is defined by the Father. It's defined by the Father. We get our understanding of love from the Father. It's not defined by how you've been treated. It's not defined by the person who rejected you. It's not defined by how much is in the bank account. It's not defined by what type of week you've had or the outcome of a bad experience. Can someone say amen? God is love. 
It comes from God. And so we need to understand where it comes from. Number two, here it is. So it's defined by the Father, but it's also demonstrated by the Son. It's demonstrated by the Son. Let's look at a verse. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. I love this. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's demonstrated by the Son. It's defined by the Father. God is love. But God didn't just say, I'm love. And I'm up here on my ivory tower. And I might just put it in a few scriptures so you can just read about it. He demonstrated his love to us. How? By sending the Son of God, by sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross, demonstrated the love. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Can you say amen? Let's look at this, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. He gave his only, one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God demonstrated his love. If you want to know what love is, you know, it's, oh, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. Well, if you do, check out Jesus. Check out Jesus. You want to know how much God loves you? Check out Jesus. Jesus walked, uh, carried a cross up to Calvary. He died on the cross. He was whipped. He, was, he had lashes. He, was, he had his beard plucked out. He had all sorts of things happen. Because of you. Because God loved you. And some people might think, oh, this is basic. This is a basic message. Well, there's a reason why it's a basic message. It's because we don't actually do it sometimes. So he's made it nice and simple for us. God is love and he's demonstrated his love through the Son. Can you say amen? That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. But here's the next thing. Here's the connection. Number three... So it's, it's defined by the Father, it's demonstrated by the Son, but it is delivered by the Spirit. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, it says, For the uh, hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So God, He, he is love. He sent the Son to show us that we're loved. But not only that, He wants that same love to not just be in a book somewhere, not just be on paper, but to live in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? And that is amazing. This love that is greater than the galaxy, this love that surpasses knowledge. I don't know about you, I want to test the breadth. I want to reach and experience the breadth. I want to test the lengths. I want to plumb the depths and reach and rise to the heights of this love that surpasses knowledge, but it is through the Holy Spirit. You know that verse where it says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. We sing about it. No mind can ever conceive the things that God has prepared. If you look at the next verse, it says, but God has revealed these things to us by his Spirit. So you can't comprehend. No eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no mind can fathom, but God can reveal it to you by the Holy Spirit. I love this. So it's defined by the Father, it's demonstrated by the Son, and it's delivered by the Spirit. That's how love works. That's how it works. Amen. It's not defined by your latest date. Let's get a keyboard player up. No. (laughs) We're changing tune here. No. It's not defined by that. And there's lots of movies out there, and I've seen them too, that portray a false image of what love actually is but as the church we should know this it's defined by the father it's demonstrated by the son and it is delivered to us by the spirit that's how it works is that okay that's a good you know theological understanding of how the trinity works together and how the love of god flows through that hallelujah amen okay now we've talked about what you need to know what how do we do this how do we Rise to the depths or plumb the depths, rise to the heights. How do we test the lengths? There's three things that we must do in order to unpack this true love, this true love. And I'm going to challenge us a bit. Is that okay? Who wants to be challenged? I know I need to be challenged every now and then. Number one, here it is. True love 
must be revealed. Must be revealed. I remember as a kid in Sunday school, you know, we talk about, for God so loved the world. That was like a memory verse. Who loves the good old memory verse? Oh, I just love it. And you had to remember it for next week to get a lollipop. Oh, take me back. Take me back to those days. But, um, and I used to remember it. Like, yes, for God so loved the world, I'd stand up, that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever, and I'm looking at the lollipop in the distance. Whoever believes, and I'm like, you know you want it. Um, we'll have eternal life. Amen. And then they would go, lollipop for you. And I could memorize it. Up here, I could, I could hold it in my brain for a week. But I remember one time going into Sunday school and they got out the piano. They said, we're going to sing a song. And they sang, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And they kept singing it. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. And I'll just be like sitting there and I don't know about you, but in that moment, it was more than a memory verse. Whatever was up here that I knew somehow found its way into here. Love must be revealed. And the way it gets from up here into here is obviously shed abroad into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So in that moment, what was head knowledge, what I had read in the book, what I had seen on the wall became more than just being on the wall, just being in the flyers, but just being in the songs, it, came, it became a revelation. Ha! Huh. Amen! That's where the good sweet spot is. When it's, you know, and some of you online, you've got it up here, but the Holy Spirit is saying today, the penny's going to drop and it's going to go from here into here today. And God is going to do it in Jesus' name. And so I want to experience this. It must be revealed. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3 again. Just look at this bit, verse 18. It's like, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of God and to know that this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled and with the, yeah, to the measure of all the fullness of God. The reason why you can know it um, and it's, it can't, be some, it can't be all put in your brain because love is spiritual. It's spiritual. And so you can't understand the spiritual things with the natural mind. You've got to receive them into your spirit. And God wants the love of God revealed to us. Amen. How would we all live if we just had a revelation? Not just up here, but that God, God's love is real in my heart. Number two. Must be revealed. Number two, it must be received. It must be received. True love must be received. I don't know about you, I'm terrible to love sometimes. Like someone goes, give me a gift. Go away. I don't like gifts. I, I'm always like, no, 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 that's not my, you know, don't show me any like, <laughs> and it's because of past hurt, you know, I put up the wall. Anybody know about that? You know, I put up, I oh, don't, you know, talk to me or I, you know, I, I, I can't receive that. And God wants to soften our hearts to receive the love of God into our hearts. Because some of us have had experiences. We live in a broken world, as you all know, and as we're all seeing, our world more than ever before needs the love of Christ shed abroad into their hearts, revealed, but not just revealed, received. And so this is the sort of thing, what Siri trying to do on here? Go, in Jesus' name, I rebuke you. <laughs> Sorry, Siri just took what I said and put it through. <laughs> Well, there you go. Um, it must be received. All right, here's, I'm going to share three quick scriptures, and they, they can be heavy to some people, but um, the book of Hosea is a, a beautiful book, and some people think it's a book of judgment, but I read it with a different lens. But look at this, right? God speaks through the prophet Hosea in Hosea 1 verse 2. Here it is. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go marry a promiscuous woman, and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. <laughs> so he's saying, Hosea, the whole nation of Israel have been promiscuous against me. 
They've gone after other lovers. They've come up with other idols. And he's saying to Hosea, this, I'm going to reveal it to you, but go, you go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her and, um, and I will show you. I'll, who wants God to speak to them like that? No, thank you, God. I will, yes, no thanks. But he says that to him and this woman actually uh, keeps going after other lovers and Hosea just keeps taking her back, just keeps on forgiving, just keeps on and God's teaching him, Hosea, this is exactly what I, my love is like to the people of Israel. And then we go to Hosea chapter 2, let's, let's fast forward it because I don't want to read the rest, by the way. Just let's go, let's skip some bits out. Hosea chapter 2, and this is what God's saying through the prophet about them. He's saying this, Therefore, I am going to allure her. I'll lead her into the wilderness. He's going to woo her back and speak tenderly to her. There I'll give her back her vineyards, and I'll make the valley of Acre the door of hope. There she will respond as in the days of her youth, as in the days she came up out of Egypt. And God is saying, you know, Hosea, it's not a book of judgment. Yes, they did the wrong thing. But as you read it, he's trying to woo them back to himself. And then the next verse is this, Hosea 3, let's forward it again. And this is what the Lord said. So the Lord said to me, go show your love to your wife again. Though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress, love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. I don't love raisin cakes one bit, but anyways. (laughs) I don't know what they were thinking back then. (laughs) Sorry if you love raisin cakes. But some of us, God is saying to us, abandon the raisin cakes. You've run after the raisin cakes. You've run after other lovers. And God is saying, I'm trying to woo you back. That's what revival's about. We've placed other idols in front of God. And he's saying, hey, I'm going to allure you back to the wilderness. I'm going to bring you back to where it all began. I'm going to bring you back to where we first started. And you're going you're gonna to get the revelation. Come on. I love this. Wow. And they kept running away, going after other idols. But God in his unfailing love kept pursuing, kept wooing, kept, you know, going after them. That's what he does to us in Jesus' name. I remember my little brother when he was born. His name's Jalen. And um, I, was, I was almost an adult probably when he was born. I've got 14 siblings. I lose count of how old everybody is. But <laughs> I think the youngest are twins and they're like five. Um, But I had this little brother named Jalen and I remember I, because we had so many kids, I would help out in the house, you know, help cook, help do run the bath schedule, all that sort of stuff. I can change a diaper, thank you, amen. And, um, but I remember there was a stench coming from Jalen and I ignored it because I knew if I was the one who smelt it, I would be assigned the task to deal with it. So I just let it sit. Until, you know, my dad said, do you want to change Jalen? All right. And Jalen looked at me. He was only like two. And I looked at him and he knew exactly what was about to go down. (laughs) And he just shot out the door, you know, he was gone. And I'm there chasing him. I'm trying to hold him down. I'm trying to, you know, and he's wiggling around. And I'm trying to, oftentimes I made a mess when I was trying to do that. But... I had to hold him down and say, come on, stop resisting arrest in Jesus' name. And hold him there and change him. But you know what? We're no different. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we've got a lot of human waste going on in our lives, in our world. And some of us run from God instead of running to God. I had to hold him down. But sooner or later, as he grew, it was no longer a wrestle. He was then old enough to deal with it, go to the potty and deal with it himself. But some of us, we just run. And God is saying, don't run. Come to me. I'll teach you how to sort it out. 
Don't resist the love of God. Run to the love of God. He's the one that's going to sort the dirty nappy. He's the one that's going to clean you up. He's the one that's going to teach you how to do this thing. And one day, that thing that once was heavy on you will no longer be because God has helped you to grow and to mature and to work it out in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. Funny illustration, but there you go. Amen. I'd rather use a real one than make one up. Okay. What have we got? It must be revealed. It must be received. Oh, my goodness. I could stay on that all day. But here's the third one, and he's, this is very important. True love must be released. It must be released. Once we know God loves us, once the revelation comes and we receive it, we can't just keep it. We've got to do something with it. We've got to release it. And so let's have a look at this verse, John 13, verse 34. I want to read this because, you know, we talk about revival, but if there's no love there, there's no revival. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You know, I think... This is something we could all work on. This is something that we're all trying to do. And it's just a reminder to us today that that's what God's commands are. Amen. And sometimes we get distracted and we, you know, try to live in other things. And, you know, God wants me to do this. God wants me to do that. Well, most importantly, he wants you to love one another. And this, by this, everyone's going to know that you're my disciples. Not by how much you post on Facebook. Not by the fish on the back of your car, even though that's a good sign. I like, keep it on there because I like to know who's a Christian when I'm out. <laughs> oh, God, they're a Christian. Phew. I feel safe. <laughs> well, they're a Christian. I won't bip. Uh, <laughs> I'm online now. <laughs> um, but that's how people are going to know. It's not, it's not through a marketing strategy. By this, everyone's going to know. The whole world's going to know that you're a Christian, that you're a disciple because of your love for one another. Wow. If that ain't a rebuke, I don't know what is. Because we can have all sorts of other things, and that's great. But the, the way people will know is by our love. I went to a Catholic boarding school once, and we used to go to Mass. And there was like a cool song that the lady played on the organ. It was like, they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity will one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Yes, thank you. And that's how they're going to know. But look at this, Matthew 22, verse 36. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. There you go. That sums up the Old Testament. Love God, love your neighbour. Wow. Amen. Can I encourage us? Let's just go a bit deeper in our love walk. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's reach out and experience the breadth. Let's test the length. Come on, let's, let's do this in Jesus' name. Let's, let's ask God to reveal the love. Let's receive the love of God. But let's release it to the people in our world. Not only to the people, but to God. Amen. I love you, God. And begin to fall in love with God again. Fall in love with Jesus again. That's what revival's about. Falling in love all over again with Jesus, just like at first. And some of us need that. We need to plumb the depths in Jesus' name. It must be released. You know, God loves the outcasts. He loves the marginalised. He loves the disenfranchised and the broken. 
And we have an opportunity in this day, in this world. We are the church, right? We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We are his bride. We are the ones on earth who are carrying out his mission and to release the love of God to people. You know, people say, I can't love others until I love myself. And I've heard that is it sort of a teaching that has been put around. And yes, you obviously should, you know, look after yourself and you should treat yourself, you know, don't put yourself down. But I don't agree because the Bible says that we love because he first loved us. I can't love you with the love I have for myself. That's cheap. That's a cop out. I must love myself. No, we loved because he first loved us. And the love I give to you is not something of my own strength and of my own works because that's going to fail. But it's the love that God pours into my hearts every day by the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? That's how it works. That's what goes on. Team, come back. Hallelujah. First John, here we go. Chapter 4, verse 7. Here it is. A bit of a text here, but this just sums it all up. I don't even know if I'm going to explain it at the end. I'm just going to read it because I can't even overdo it. But here it is. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. We read that one. God showed how much he loved, demonstrated, right? By sending the, his one and only son into the world, so that we might have eternal life through him. This is a real love. This is a real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. When my sin was heavy, you sent Jesus to take it away. When my guilt was strong, you loved me so much that you sent Jesus to take away our sins. If that ain't something to rejoice about, I don't know. I don't know what is. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Do you know what I've noticed? This world can be cruel. This world is so cruel. But in the house of God, we have a lampstand. In the house of God at Generations Church, we have a lampstand. And God's saying, come on, let's return to this place of our first love and let's let the whole world know the whole GV let the whole of TAP know that we are Christians because of our love for one another but let's keep going we surely ought to love each other no one has ever seen God but if we love each other God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in our life or in us and God has given us his spirit delivered by the spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us furthermore We have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent His Son to be the Saviour of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them and they live in God. We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in His love. Doesn't matter what the world's doing. Doesn't matter what coronavirus is doing. We have put our trust in His love, in a broken world, in a damaged world. Our trust is in His love. Where are we? Okay. Woo! Okay, God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. How good's that? So it's not about us. We just live in Him and He helps us. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. That's, you know... There's so many people out there trying to put fear about the day of judgment. Well, I've come to tell you, I don't live in fear of the day of judgment because of the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. We don't have to be afraid of the last days. As I said a few weeks ago, it is not the last days for us. It's the last days for the devil. Preach. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence. Because we live like Jesus here in this world. Keep going, keep going. Such love has no fear. Because perfect love expels all fear. 
expels all fear. If we are afraid, it's for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. But how good is it that today we can test the lengths, we can plumb the depths, we can experience the breadth and rise to the heights. We love each other because He loved us first. (laughs) We don't love each other because we know how to love, but He loves us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people, we can see how can we love God whom we cannot see. And He has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. Amen. Is there anything else or have I... No, that's it. How powerful is that verse? I'm going to go home and read that a few times more. It's deep, it's wide, it's long, it's high. If you want to experience revival, reach out and experience the breadth. Plumb the depths. Test the lengths. Rise to the heights. I don't just want to read about it in the flyer. I don't just want to see it on the wall. I don't just want to look at it from a distance. But I want to go there. I want to experience this thing. And when we do it, we'll be able to say, God, I love you. But do you know what he's going to say? I love you more. And we're going to say, yeah, but God, I did this this week. I love you. And he's going to say, yeah, but I did this. And then we're going to go, but I did this. And he'll say, yeah, but I did this. Yeah, but God, I went to Africa for you. Yeah, but God, I went to the cross. But he'll say, I went to the cross for you. And we'll, then we'll finally surrender and go, oh, you beat me. I love you. He says, I love you more. And you go, God, you win. Amen? Amen. Team, come sing this and then I'm going to pray.